Okay, hi everyone. I'll be discussing now the part 3 of the UJT application and sample problems. So this is actually only one problem but there are a lot of values here being determined. So given the relaxation oscillator in this figure and these are the other given values, so we must determine the following. So let's go through each one by one. So first, determine RB1 and RB2 at IE is equal to 0 ampere. So for the solution, so let's recall the formula based on our uh, video from part 1. The standoff ratio is equal to RB1 over RBB. And another formula, RBB, is the sum of RB1 and RB2. Now let's just need to uh, determine RB1 first using the derived equation standoff times RBB and substitute the given and we will be able to solve RB1 which is 3 kilo ohms. And for RB2, using this equation, that will become RBB minus RB1. So we'll be using 5 kilo ohms RBB and the solve RB1 which is 3 kilo ohm thus RB2 is 2 kilo ohm. And these are the final answers. Okay, next part B, calculate V at the peak point, the voltage necessary to turn on the UJT. So for the solution, uh, let's recall the formula from part 1, wherein we have a UJT in series with an external resistor. And the uh, sum of the voltages based on KVL we will derive Vp or the voltage at the peak point is equal to the voltage across the diode internally on the UGT Vpn plus the voltage across the Rb1 and R2 and that sums up as V2. And the derived formula using the voltage divider is shown here. Now we'll just use to... Uh, replace the values of RB1 and RB2 from part A that we have solved a while ago and R2 here which is equal to 0.1 kilo ohm VBB and VPN we will be able to solve for the value of VP which is 7.994 volts and that is the final answer. Okay next for part C determine whether R1 is within the permissible range values as determined by to ensure firing of the UJT. So in this example, there is already a given value for R1 which is 50 kilo ohm. Now we need to solve for the uh, permissible range so that we could determine if this is acceptable or not. So for the solution, let's recall the formula given for finding the range of R1 from the minimum to the maximum. We'll just need to substitute the values. All of these for the minimum are given. Well, for the maximum, we will use the V peak, which was solved from part B, the value of 7.994 volts. And we will be able to solve for the range of R1, ranging from 1.1 kilo ohms to 400.6 kilo ohm. And since the value here, 50, is within this range, Therefore, this is acceptable or this is within the permissible range of values. Okay, next part D. Determine the frequency of oscillation if RB1 is equal to 100 during the discharge phase. Recall, in part A, we, will, we have been able to solve RB1 which is equal to 3 kilo ohm. But that is before the UJT turns on. Now, uh, we are using this circuit as oscillator and as we have analyzed in part 2 of this video, the capacitor is charging and discharging. And it specifies here that during the discharge phase, the value of resistor inside the UJT RB1 becomes smaller. From 3 kilo ohm, it now becomes 100 ohms during the discharge phase. It is also noted in here. 
Now, we need to review back the concept of charging and discharging in order to check the frequency which must be determined here. Let's recall that the voltage across the capacitor is always equal to the voltage across the emitter here because they are parallel. And we're gonna use this UGT characteristic curve to determine the necessary items for, for this problem. So uh, since VE is equals to VC, uh, therefore the capacitor voltage is also equals either the voltage at the valley point or the voltage at the peak point. Now we need to check the phases here. First, at the initial circuit uh, current flow, the voltage supply of 12 volts will pass through R1 and directly grows to the capacitor and charge. So from a very small voltage, Vc will become high until it becomes fully charged at V peak. So once fully charged, it will gonna turn on this UGT. And since this is maximum, we will now go through the next phase which is discharge. All the voltage stored here will now be discharged going through the UGT, the RB1 part of the UGT, and until R2. And the cycle will continue until the capacitor becomes fully discharged. Once it is no longer have enough charge to supply, or once the, the voltage here is at the minimum value, the UGT will now turn off, and the cycle of charging will repeat again from the supply going to R1 up to the capacitor. Now, in this chart, we are comparing the voltage across the emitter or the capacitor against the current IE. What we need is a detail about the frequency or at least about the period or time. So here, I created an equivalent chart for the time versus the voltage across the capacitor or the emitter. And we want to know the charging time and the discharging time. So here is the illustration. So in actual, when the voltage across the capacitor or the emitter is going from a low value at the valley point, going to the peak point, that is actually charging. And relatively, the time to charge is high. Once it reaches the peak point, the UGT turns on and the capacitor will begin to discharge to this circuit. And that will be the time for discharge, which is relatively a very small value compared to the charging time. We need to get the total time for the charging and discharging part here to get one cycle, and that will be one period. And if you will recall, period is related to frequency. Now let's uh, recall the formula to be used to determine the solution for this problem. So for the charging time, here is the formula. And for the discharging time, here is the formula. Take note that these are already derived formulas and the concept were from the transient topic under circuits. So to, if you want to derive, you must go back and review that topic transient. But for now, we're gonna use this derived formula. And to get the period, we must add the charging time and the discharging time. And this will be the total period of one cycle. And for the frequency, that is just the reciprocal of the period or one over time. So using these formulas, you just need to substitute all the given and we will be able to solve for the value of the frequency. So now to solve, so the charging time here is the formula. And all the givens were already determined or are already available. And we will be able to compute for the time to charge, which is 5.051 microsecond. Now for the discharging time, let's substitute again the values. And we will be able to compute 0 0.042 microsecond. So if you will notice, the time to discharge is very significantly small compared to the charging time. 
almost negligible. Now, to determine the total period T, you need to get the sum of the charging and discharging time, and we will be able to solve 5.093 microsecond. And for the frequency, that is just the reciprocal of this value, and that will be equal to 196.383 kilohertz. And that is the final answer for this part D. Now, for part E, we were asked to sketch the waveform of VC for a full cycle. That is the voltage across the capacitor. So, remember, there is a charging and discharging phase, and we need to sketch that waveform. So, using the values of in the previous parts, the waveform below is created. So, we will just need here the value at the of the voltage at the valley point that is equal to 1 volt. The, vol the voltage at the peak point that was computed equivalent to 7.994 volts or 8 to be approximate. So from the valley point, it will charge up to the peak point. And the total time of charging, that is actually 5.051 microsecond. And when the UGT turns on, it will gonna discharge immediately until the charge is fully uh, consumed by the load and that is actually a very small period of 0 0.042 microsecond and the cycle continues. And as you can see, this is repetitive. That's why this is a relaxation oscillator. Okay, last part is sketch the waveform of VR2 for a full cycle. So we want to determine the voltage across R2 and sketch its waveform. So we need to determine the extreme values which is the voltage when the capacitor is charging and the voltage when the capacitor is discharging. So those two conditions, let's check. Okay, during the charging phase, the supply voltage on the left part of the circuit is charging going to the capacitor. And uh, the current here is almost equal to zero since the UGT is still turned off. So thus, the 12 volt supply is also charging or supplying separately on this right side of the circuit. And we, we just need to use a voltage divider to determine VR2. So remember, we have here a RBB or the total resistor of the UGT. And we have here R2. So by using voltage divider and substituting the values, we will be able to solve for the value of VR2 during the charging phase, which is equal to 0.235 volt. Now for the discharging, so we will consider that the voltage across the capacitor is already equal to VP. Because that is the time when the UGT turns on and the capacitor is fully charged. And recall, VP is equal to 7.994 volts or approximately 8 volts. So we just need to use KVL around this loop. So voltage across the capacitor plus voltage across the diode internal plus voltage across RB1. And take note, RB1 should be 100 ohms during this discharge phase. So we'll use the value of 100 ohm and the voltage across R2. And that will complete the KVL. So that will become VC equals to VPN plus VRB1 plus VR2. And by deriving the equation, we will be able to come up with this derived equation. And substituting the values, the total voltage during the charge discharging phase is equal to 3.647 volt. Of course, that will become higher during the discharge because there is an extra current supplied by the capacitor. And we will gonna use these values to, to sketch the waveform. Now for the time. That is the same as what we have computed a while ago during the charging time and discharging time. Now here is the waveform. So here is the computed minimum value during the charging. The voltage across R2 is remained at 0.24 volts. 
but once capacitor is fully charged, it will give an equivalent voltage drop of 3.65 volts and while it discharges, the voltage gradually decreases on R2 until the UGT becomes turns off again. And for the timing, so during the charging time, that is equal to 5.051 microsecond. And during the discharging, that is a very small amount of 0.042 microsecond. And this is the equivalent cycles across VR2. And that will be all. Thank you.